good evening, everyone. Welcome to our 2017-2018 Fulton County State of Schools event. Let's give a big round of applause to the talented musicians who performed for us as we came in, the Roswell High School String Ensemble. They set just the right mood for us as we enter this beautiful facility. We hope you enjoyed touring J.A. Biztown and Finance Park. I'm excited to be here tonight as we celebrate our schools, our community, and our achievements. I'm proud of my six years teaching in Fulton County Schools, both at Shake Rag and Barnwell Elementary Schools. I am so lucky that I get to spend every single day with the greatest kids. And I can tell you firsthand that we have some of the hardest working, most caring, and innovative teachers working with us. Those people, the kids, the teachers, and our leadership, and everyone in between, those people are the reason why I love being a part of Fulton County Schools. So tonight, you are in for an upbeat, student-focused program. It's also interactive. Later, we're going to get all of you out of your seats and committing to our strategic plan. And before I go any further, let's acknowledge this massive wooden reproduction of our strategic plan built by the construction classes at Elkins Point Middle School. <laughs> They've even signed the back of it as true artists. Let, so tonight, we will be streaming this event live on our Fulton County Schools website. By the way, for those here, the hashtag for the evening for all these pictures you're going to take and post on social media is hashtag Fulton SOOS. This is an outstanding school district led by a visionary, hardworking board of education, whom you'll meet in just a moment. You'll also hear from our superintendent, Dr. Jeff Rose, whose transformational leadership serves as a driving force for academic excellence in our schools. We are also honored that Georgia's Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle took time out of his busy schedule to join us tonight. So, let's get started. We begin with the presentation of colors by members of the Junior ROTC Unit from Langston Hughes High School, led by Cadet Quindasia McGinty. Once they are in place, Westlake High School's Belasia Jones will sing the national anthem. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Please stand for the presentation of colors. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the round parts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's Oh, say does. 
may be seated. Thank you, Langston Hughes, JROTC, and Belasia for getting our program off to a magnificent start. That was incredible. So let's give them another round of applause. Our next distinguished program participant is Fulton County School Board President Linda Bryant. Mrs. Bryant has served the students and staff in our district since 1993. Mrs. Bryant is a former teacher, PTA president, local school advisory committee chair, the chair of the superintendent's advisory committee, and does so much more for our district. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to board president Linda Bryant. Thank you, Mrs. Kersley. Good evening. I'd like to welcome all of you to the annual State of Our Schools tonight. Our district always appreciate the support of our community as we continue to focus on continuous achievement for all of our students. As board members, we know that it takes all of us working together to achieve the goals set for our students and our district. I would like to recognize our board members so please stand and face the audience as I call your name. Our board vice president is not here tonight, but she, would, she sends her regrets, and she'd love to have been here, but she's out of town. Board member from District 1, Katha Stewart. <laughs> Continue to stand. <laughs> Um, also, board member Gail Dean would have liked to have been here also, but she, I'm sure she's probably caught in traffic somewhere. If you tried to get here tonight, it was awesome trying to get through all of that traffic. <clears throat> board member Kimberly Dove from District 6. <clears throat> board member Julia Bernath from District 7. Thank you so much. These are our board members that are here tonight, and Katie Reeves could not get here also. Thank you. I would also like to recognize any elected officials in the audience. If you are an elected official, please stand. Uh, these, well, since I only have two right in front of me, uh, the, this is the mayor of Union City, Vince Williams. And this is the mayor pro tem from the city of South Fulton, Catherine Rao. It is now my honor to welcome and introduce our Lieutenant Governor, Casey Cagle, who is joining us this evening. Lieutenant uh, Cagle is a successful entrepreneur and a respected former state senator. Casey Cagle made history in 2006 by becoming the first Republican elected to Georgia's second highest office. After winning re-election in November of 2010, Georgia voters overwhelmingly re-elected him again in November of 2014. Returning Lieutenant Governor to the office for his third term, Last year, Mr. Cagle published his first book, Education Unleashed, to outline his vision for a public education system that will develop the strongest workforce in the world. In addition to his many accomplishments in public life, he is most proud that he is a husband, a father, and if you can believe it, a granddaddy. <laughs> so, Please join me in welcoming our Lieutenant Governor, Casey Cable. That was a beautiful introduction. Thank you. Wow. Well, thank you very, very much, Linda. What a beautiful introduction, and I appreciate so much uh, the opportunity 
to be with you and the invitation as well. Um, I want to, first of all, just make a couple of quick observations, uh, if I might. Um, a wonderful crowd here, all assimilated for a very important uh, occasion uh, to think and to look to the future. And as I was sitting at my, my chair waiting uh, to be introduced, I was looking at the strategic plan. And I want to I wanna make a couple quick observations because I'm sure that all of you were probably just as inquisitive as I was as I was sitting in my seat. But first of all, this was, this was made, as was articulated earlier, by eighth graders, if I recall, right? Eighth graders, middle school students. Well, I enjoy doing a little woodworking myself. That's a little hidden secret. Most people don't know that, so don't go talking about it too much. But look at how around the wood it's routed, okay? That's routed around the wood, all the details that were put uh, in place in order to make this. But the thing that I admire the most is not just the craftsmanship of the wood, but the fact in Fulton, look at that number one in the F. It says everything you need to know. This is a school district that not only wants to be number one in every single student's life in terms of making an impact, but the forward motion of the era showing how the pathways leading forward to make an impact in individual lives. This is a community, this is a school district that is focused on every single student. And the beauty about this strategic plan going forward along with your superintendent, who I personally have uh, the utmost respect for, is a great leader and a person who is very, very clear and passionate passionate about what he wants to accomplish in this system, along with your school board that's reaching out to do things that are transformational in people's lives. Uh, when I look at all the successes that you have experienced in Fulton County school system, I think about not just simply the fact that you have moved your graduation rates to 87%, which in itself is remarkable, uh, but also the fact that you are stretching the boundaries to do things differently than everyone else is doing across the state. And I think that that is the beauty of, of sitting down and thinking about a strategy. It gives you the opportunity to drill deeper, to say, this is what we accomplished this year, but what can we accomplish next year? How can we become more efficient, more effective, but more importantly, how can we reach children in a way that we've never been able to do before to take them to a height that only they could dream about? That's the beauty of education. Education is the great equalizer. No matter where you come from, no matter what your circumstances, you can end up successfully by gaining the skills and the knowledge that you need in life. And every single one of you are taking part in making that become a reality. And the beauty of the charter system that I created in 2007, a lot of people thought that we were never going to get a school system like Fulton County to do it because it was just too big. But you guys didn't just do it. You took it to a whole new level because you embraced innovation. You embraced local accountability and the fact that you understood that really your success was harnessed in giving people more authority and more opportunity to have their voice heard in shaping what that school system is going to look like. And as a result, you have seen outcomes that actually exceed the state average. All of those things are huge successes. And the beauty is the future is even brighter. And so I, I applaud what you're doing tonight and what your superintendent is going to lead you through in 2000 to 2022. I actually put on my little bracelet. Uh, and I look forward to thinking about this and reading this plan more uh, when I sit down with your superintendent, Dr. Rose, uh, a year or two from now and say, how are we doing? Because every time you exceed all expectations. And also, just the last thing I want to point out is a lot of the challenges that we face in education is, is, is centered around more bureaucracy. 
and finding this one-size-fits-all mentality, which we know doesn't work. And all of that is true even in the testing component. We seem to be testing more and more, and we create more and more high-stake high tests. And we have partnered with Fulton County to be innovators in the new assessment that is going to come forward. And the reason we partnered with Fulton County is because we have so much confidence in each of you and that you're willing to think outside the box and find those formative testing processes that really help kids all the way through the system in achieving their goals. I can't tell you tonight how thankful and how proud I am of each and every one of you for your commitment and for your willingness to, be, to, to step out and do things that are unique and different. You're the great innovators, and as a result of that, I will tell you, you are setting a course for your students that are going to, to surpass anything that we could imagine, and I appreciate your commitment, your willingness to do so, and I look forward to our continued partnership going forward. Thank you all very, very much for allowing me to bring you greetings. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Cagle, for your inspiring remarks. We know you are busy and we are glad that you could be here tonight to share with us your thoughts and desires for Georgia students. Next on our program this evening is Victor Dobrinsky, a REACH scholar and Taylor Road Middle School student. At the REACH ceremony this fall, we learned that Victor would like to attend Georgia Tech and pursue a career in medicine or engineering. He has a bright future ahead. Let's give a big round of applause for Victor Dobrinsky. Good evening, everyone. I'm happy to be here tonight to introduce our superintendent, Dr. Jeff Rose. I met Dr. Rose last year when I was honored to be as a, as a REACH scholar representing Taylor Road Middle School. We took a great picture together, and I think we look really nice. <laughs> He is friendly and funny, and he joked about how much he liked my bow tie, so that's why I decided to wear it again today. <laughs> Since I already feel like I know him a little bit, I'll tell you more about him. Dr. Rose became our superintendent on June 2016. As superintendent, he has a big job. Nearly 97,000 students, 105 schools, 14,000 employees, and a budget of over $1 billion. Whew. Along with leading the district, Dr. O Dr. Rose has been busy working towards our new strategic plan. He will tell you more about that in a moment. I can tell you that I will serve as a guide for the district during the next five years. It will, it could, it will make sure from everybody from the community, from school board members to principals, teachers and staff, to parents and community me members are working towards the same goals and priorities. Before joining Fulton County Schools, Dr. Je Dr. Jeff Rose served as the superintendent for the Beaverton School System, located near Portland, Oregon. During his 21 years of education, he, schooled, he served as a principal, an educational assistant, a classroom teacher, a director of school improvement, and a superintendent for the Canby School System, also located in Oregon. We are glad him and his family has come all the way across from Oregon to Fulton County, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a big round of applause as we applaud, welcome our superintendent, Jeff Rose. So let's check the sound. Can you hear me okay? So I'm dragging my teammates with me and I, because I think it's really important that, that we see this and hear this. This strategic plan, what we're going to talk about today, this came from a process led by these leaders. So this is their job as school board members. We are a team and when it came to laying the groundwork for the next five years, we knew that we needed to listen to the community. Over 6,000 people over the course of last year, seven months, weighed in and gave input. And these are our representatives. They represent their communities and the district at large. 
So when it comes to the language, the strategies, the targets, this team needs to be honored because nobody does this work alone. And I wanted to make sure that I honored the teamwork that happens because we do this in a circle. We circle up around a table and we have conversations, we have debates, and we focus on our kids. And out of that, out of a very strategic process comes this plan I'm gonna mention today. And this is a group that needs to be honored and me on the stage alone felt awkward. So ladies and gentlemen, can we please give a roaring round of applause to this team. Thank you. So I realize, based upon this setup, that there may be a lack of eye contact occurring, which, by the way, is OK. There are two specific screen, screens, way to, your, way to your right and way to your left. My screen is an iPad in front of me, OK? So just so you know, if I look down for a moment where I see you looking other places, that's to be excused, because I will be talking about some slides and some content here, starting with this. But first, let me pause. Uh, Ms. Jones, who came up and sang for us today. Should we have just stopped and left? That was amazing. Somebody should get that girl's autograph. That was amazing. And, and Victor, th this tie, I, I, I did talk about this tie the first time I met him. It's because I can't pull it off. It's, it's that good. Um, so before we move on, I will tell you, I too, am uh, fascinated by woodworking. And I noticed the grooves and the bevel. No, I'm just kidding. I just, <laughs> I can't do anything. I have no skills whatsoever, but I think this is fantastic. So a strategic plan. If you were to look to the slide, you'll see this, this blueprint. And on the blueprint, it describes our architects, those I just introduced to you. Our team, we are the architects of this plan. But this is what a strategic plan is. If you think about you know, the, the concept of what we just celebrated a few weeks ago, when we talked about Martin Luther King Jr. and he talked about having a dream. His speech, I have a dream. If you listen carefully, he even talks about very specific, in a poetic way, results of that dream. He talks about what he expects from the dream. A plan, a strategic plan, when done really well, truly is a dream. It's a North Star. You know what the North Star is, right? The Earth's axis almost points directly at it. It's not the brightest star in the sky, but it's always true, and it always guides in the right direction when it can be seen. So this plan is our North Star. It describes our dreams and the results we expect to see over time. So keep that in mind, because my job tonight is not to go through every detail. We'll be here far too long. I'm going to talk about the concepts that I hope we can walk away with and remember and actually feel in our gut, if that makes sense. That's what the strategic plan is. Now, we say in Fulton County, students come first. Last year, not in this room, but at the state of schools, I asked people to stand when they would feel satisfied with a graduation rate for your own children. People waited, and they didn't stand until we got to 95%, and then we got to 100%. So what we're going to do tonight is, throughout the entire presentation, we're going to think of students. We're going to think of students first. So what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to place a student in the chair. I want you to think of maybe one of your own children. You may think of a, a child that you taught. You could put Victor in the chair. You could put Miss Jones in the chair. But you need to think very specifically. The content of this discussion is as it relates to this student. Because number one, in, in Fulton County, students do come first. But that's why we do this work. We don't do this work because we're interested in creating a glossy brochure and having it on a counter. The strategy really is about this particular student. One thing we have to talk about before we get into any sort of strategy or focus is this. I don't know if you can see the words on the screen. 
But one thing we have to remember that sometimes it's hard to have a strategy for is truly what our kids face these days. And I do say these days, because I will tell you, the anxiety and the challenge and the pressure students are facing in this current time in our country is different than it ever has been before. Yes, we can all remember anxieties of our youth, but I will tell you, we cannot relate. Things are different. The amount our kids are connected, the pressure relative to school and academics, just the hierarchy of needs when students even come to school hungry, dealing sometimes with violence outside. There's so many different kinds of pressures that create the world for a child that sometimes we can't relate to. So I don't have a silver bullet for this, other than we know relationships are always and will always be a cornerstone to this work. You ask any great teacher that. You ask Ms. Curley that, she will tell you that. Relationships with her students. And we just have to keep that in mind as our students navigate some challenges related to their future, not our past. So let's talk about our goal. Now, all great organizations start with their why. They can describe why, they describe what, and they can describe how. Well, this is our goal. And if you think about it, and we'll, we'll kind of break it down here in a second, but this, this is our why. I know this is my why. When I went into education, I didn't go into education because I thought, I really want to help kids become really good at school. That's not what I thought. I thought, I, I want to help kids gain the skill set so that they can be sex successful, so that they can navigate their future, so that they can be confident learners and leaders. I didn't think about the idea as a fourth and fifth grade teacher where I started. My job is to make sure that they're stellar sixth graders and then I'm good. Right? Learning is more than that. Our goal is focused on when kids leave us. If you look closely at the language, prepare students to graduate, bottom line they have to graduate, but they're ready to pursue and succeed on their chosen paths, which means they get to choose and they have the skill set to do it as opposed to a lack of skill choosing for them and they choose, but it is about when they leave us. That is our why, if that makes sense. Now, I will tell you, in a strategic plan, you still have to have targets. You still have to have metrics. Think of these numbers, 100, 92, 85, and zero. Those are just metrics relative to this goal. That's not even breaking down the whole plan. 100% of our schools, we want to beat the odds. I'll explain that in a minute. 92 grad rate is what we're shooting for in terms of a percent. 85% of our students should be college and career ready, and zero schools should be labeled with a failing label. Those are our targets. And that's just related to our why. So this is why we do this work so students can leave and be successful. Now I'm gonna break in and start talking a little bit more about our what. What number one. Now you'll notice, as a student is in the center, you'll notice our pillars begin to surround visually on the graph. The concept is our pillars are holding this up. We believe, our school board believes that if we are known for these four specific things I will talk about, that will make a difference relative to this goal. It's what we want to be known for. We want to be known for this. It's our North Star. The first one may be the most obvious, student achievement. So of course, we're preparing them with the foundational skills so that they can not just navigate school, but you know, life beyond school. By the way, it's not just academic, and we all know that. There's a lot of critical skill sets, some which, by the way, you can't even measure. But we do have to measure them. Here's the good news. Last year, even amidst some challenges, in the, really early in the year where we started looking very co closely and said, we have schools on such far different ends of the spectrum relative to achievement. What are we going to do about that right now? And then what structure of support are we going to do for in the future? Last year, we actually had the most successful year Fulton County has ever had in recent history. 
since we've been able to measure it. I'm just going to mention a few pieces of data. I'm not going to go into depth. And you know why? Last year after this presentation, nobody came up to me and said, you know what, Jeff? Those graphs that you showed us were amazing. <laughs> now, no one said that. So I'm just going to show a few data points that I think is important for us to know. So it was already mentioned. 86.8% graduation rate. That's the highest in the metro area. Before the last strategic plan, 71%. From 71 to 86, leading the metro, a number of our schools have broken the 90 barrier and are doing extremely well. So this really is an area that our district has leaned into. And what we've shown is when we lean in, we see results. And we should be proud. 13,484 AP exams passed with a three or better. Now, I'll put that into, into perspective. Number one, that's a lot. Okay? Number two, if you compare our, our passing rate of 64% on those exams, and how many of you have taken those exams? Okay, I wasn't allowed in the room. Okay? 64%, that's higher than not just Georgia's average, it's higher than the global average. So once again, another area that shows our students excelling academically. 23.8 average in our ACT. We've never seen anything like that. So that was our highest result last year. Once again, something we should be extremely proud of. 70 schools had gains with CCRPI. CCRPI, for those in the audience who don't know, it's our state rating system. And out of that rating system, it gives a score. And that score translates to a letter grade, a letter grade we're all familiar with, A, B, C, D, and F. Now, 70 schools made gains last year. So first off, that should be impressive. But let's go a little bit further into the information. 26 of 28 schools that were labeled as failing schools improved. 26 of 28. <laughs> We say 70, and we think, well, we're leaving some out. So out of the remaining, just 19 of them were already A's and B's. So when you add the improvement, where we're heading relative to our achievement, we know we're heading in the right direction. We know we're heading in the right direction, but great organizations are also extremely honest. And every year are trying to find um, data that shows this. I'm pleased, but I'm not satisfied. And I will tell you, last year's data alone, I'm pleased. And I am far from satisfied. Let me show a few points that we also should pay attention to. 18, 18 schools are still in that, quote, failing category. That's down from 28, and that's good, but 18 still. Eight schools are still on that turnaround, turnaround list. That's down from 14, but it's, you know what? Those numbers need to be zero. This strategic plan needs to embrace the concept that no child deserves to go to a school that is labeled, focused on the word labeled, as a failing school. Okay. <laughs> One thousand eight hundred and eighty-eight third graders last year in this district were not reading at benchmark. Let's round that up to two thousand. Two thousand students in our district are not reading at third grade where they need to be or they can be. Let's think about the impact that is going to have on those students on communities as they get older. It is the very reason our school board has said third grade reading, literacy in elementary, is the priority relative to our elementary school metric, which is also embedded in the strategic plan. This is data that we need to pay attention to and we all need to be alarmed by. 45% of our schools, quote, beat the odds. Now, some may say, but that was up. The year before is 38%, and yes, it was. Do you know what our goal is? 100. And now, 100, because this is what beat the odds is. 
A Beat the Odds school is you take schools' demographics and you compare them to like schools across the state of Georgia. With those like schools, you find their mean score. You're either above it or you're below it. If you are above it, you are beating the odds. If you are below it, you are not. Who's to say that not all of our schools can beat the odds? If some schools can, why can't all of our schools? We need to have the attitude and the belief in our kids that that is possible. And by the way, that is possible for any school, regardless of socioeconomic level and even currently how they're performing, because we are talking about looking at students across the state that are, have similar demographics and challenges, 100%. So we should still be alarmed by this 45%. Pillar number two, people and culture. We need to attract them, we need to nurture them, and we need to keep them. That is really critical because people impact culture. You know what culture is? That's just kind of the way we are. That's how we do things. And by the way, we know that a quality culture keeps quality people and it attracts them. It's good for students, it's good for families, and it's good for our staff. So we're actually going to take a minute right now and we're going to hear, you're going to have to look to these video screens now, and we're going to hear from a couple of our teachers. It's, it's that it's grown up in the South. So I've been teaching for 25 years, all with Fulton County. Why do I continue to teach? It's easy to explain. It's the, it's the, the wow factor. And when I can get a group of kids to, to say wow at, at history, something that we're talking about in class, it's, it's a thrill. There's also nothing wrong with when I have kids come in and, and tell me that they've been talking about my class with their family over the dinner table, that's exciting. When I have a, a call to the front office at the end of the day and a student's there who I taught seven or eight years ago and they just wanted to come by and say thank you for teaching me how to think and not what to think. Um, all of those things just sort of inspire me. They, they keep me going, they excite me, and uh, that, that hasn't changed over 25 years. 25 years I've been in the business. What I did back 20 years ago and what I'm doing now, I can only say one word. We're evolving. I think I have been very fortunate to be in a community here at Banneker. I have like some deep sea for my students. I think the main thing I want to leave behind is I just wasn't about the academic student. I was about the whole student. I just want to know that I gave you enough and I sparked enough in you that you will want to go out there and be the best you that you can be. So I don't know if you noticed what I did. Both those teachers, they talked about something very specific. Both of them talked about their why. Did you hear that? Right? They talked about this impact they want to make. I actually believe when anybody associated with our school district, regardless of role and responsibility, when you can describe your why, when you can describe the impact you either believe that you can make or you are making, I do believe that impacts culture, regardless of position. Area number three, or what's number three? Community collaboration. Now, I will tell you this, and I've said this over and over, the reason that we talk about this is because everyone knows that we can't do this work alone. It's actually just begging the question of, so whose job is it, not just to raise but educate kids? Whose job is it? Well, as hopefully we're seeing that it's not just up to the teacher, it's not just the parent, it really is about our community surrounding our students. In Fulton County, we want to be known for this. In fact, it's why we're a charter system. It's one of the reasons we're a charter system. Our charter system is really saying, community, we need you in the schools. Schools, we need you to open the doors up. We want communities to feel ownership, and we want schools to not feel afraid, but to feel excited about the idea of community working hand in hand as it relates to supporting the student. That's what a charter system really promotes. 
That's what we should be focusing on. Now, we also have another really impressive video with community leaders who are going to talk very specifically about this topic, and then I'll have some commentary after that. Great schools bring great people that want a great education for their kids, and that creates great communities. There's nothing that determines the quality of life, the economic well-being, or just the overall goodwill in your community than your education system. Our schools are a microcosm of the world. Lessons that you learn in working with others and socializing with others translates into what we're all doing today as adults. Education is a critical component of our economic development. We really have to make sure that we're meeting the needs of people and getting to root causes and really working together to come up with real solutions to help real people and bring about real change. I think bringing on Dr. Jeff Rose has been a huge benefit. He cares about each and every individual student, making sure that we have the right people in place and leadership that has been beneficial to every school that's in Fulton County. What I've seen in Fulton County is a very diverse way of ensuring that every student has the best chance at a career down the road. It was very important that the business community and the school system be in constant conversation about what the needs of businesses and employers are so that the school system can incorporate that into the curriculum. These are the kids who are going to be running your community. So it's important that we go to PTA meetings even if we don't have anybody there. Just take five minutes out of your day, walk into a school, ask for the principal and say thank you for the job that you're doing. I'm excited about the leadership of the district. I'm excited about the leadership within our schools. And most importantly, I'm excited about our children and families who enter those schools every day and the great talents and gifts that we will be able to nurture and bring forth in our community. This is a reality here in, in Fulton County. We have seen the benefits of collaboration. It takes all of us to make sure that our communities are stronger, more educated. If the school system fails, our communities fail and decay. My name is Mayor William Bill Edwards. My name is Mayor Vince Williams. I'm Mayor Rusty Paul. I am Mayor Lori Henry. I'm Mayor Dina Holiday Ingram. I'm Mayor Bodker, and I'm a community champion for Fulton County Schools. Uh, one other theme that I know that I own that was, that was mentioned in this, in this video is that community collaboration as it relates to our school district and our schools, working with community and vice versa, actually is about even more than the student. And I know we're thinking, well, what could be more than the student? Well, think about this. Schools are a pillar to any community, whether that is a strong one or a crumbling one. It just is a fact. Strong schools impact community at large. Communities investing in schools has a strong ROI, right? The return on that investment makes a difference in terms of who it attracts and who it maintains. And it engages people in something that is so important because, of course, the return is our students are leaving us prepared, prepared to support us and to lead us. Pillar number four. Fiscal responsibility. This has to do with money. It has to do with, by the way, our resources, our collective resources. This isn't just school district resources, because our concept in Fulton County is we want to be transparent, we want to be focused, and we want to be measuring the impact resources has on our students. Now, I will tell you this. This is an area of strength for Fulton County, and we can improve. I want to show you some data that just draws on an example that I think should make us all feel proud and aware that we can accomplish the financial goals that we have set before us. So just a few facts about us. 1.5 billion total budget, that is, that is our year. Can we all agree that's a lot of money? Okay, 1.5 billion a year. 75% we aim to maintain to our schools at the least. 
Now, if you're thinking that doesn't seem like a lot, well, you know, there is transportation, there's a lot of facility issues and so forth. This is a high mark that we hold ourselves accountable to, and we're currently meeting that. 75%. It takes, here it comes, 4.3 million per day to run us. 4.3 million per day. And by the way, 86% of our budget is people. We are a people business. That's how important this is. Now, I want you to think about just your, your monthly. Think about your bills. Think about this. What if 65% of your cash flow, of your income, was suddenly cut off for six months. Would that be tricky? <laughs> Would that be tricky if you also had 14,000 people you were trying to support, which is our staff, 14,000? Well, here in Fulton, we had a recent challenge, 63% Right? Of our cash flow, we went six months without it. It was extremely challenging, but because of this board's fiscal responsibility and yearning to be good stewards of the public dollar, I will tell you this, and we should celebrate this. Zero furlough days, zero payrolls missed, and zero dollars borrowed. In a short period of time, we are back on track. Somebody from our financial department said, you know what we are here in finance? We're like this invisible umbrella. And I said, all right, <laughs> what does that mean? Well, our job is to make sure that when it rains, kids don't get rained on. In fact, they don't even know it's raining. I thought that was a pretty stellar quote. I think that demonstrates our level of responsibility in terms of being wise fiscal stewards. So I'm going to sum this up with a couple of points. Our circle, our student being in the middle of it. You see this graphic here. You see what we want to be known for surrounding this student. Everyone in this room, every single person in this room are part somewhere on the spectrum of surrounding and supporting this student. Every single person in this room, and there's many, many more. But we have to know it, we have to feel it, we have to feel that responsibility. But everybody in the room is part of this. This cannot be a piece of paper dusty on a shelf. In fact, I will tell you, I was at Sandtown Middle School last week. Great audience, we're talking about the city of South Fulton. And a woman said, is it possible? She raised her hand and asked a question. She said, you know what we should do? We should make every parent or family member, we should force them, they have to volunteer in a school. They have to. It's a requirement. That's what we should do. Can we do that? And I said, that's interesting. No. <laughs> right. That part's not legal. Right? A gentleman said, well, I've got a question. He said, look at this audience, and it was a good audience. We had about 100 people in the room, and he said, so this audience is here because they're curious. They want to know where we're going. We were talking about this stuff. What's it going to take for everyone to feel it? What's that going to take? So I, I, I didn't have a great answer. I, I told him, number one, unfortunately, there's no silver bullet. But this is what I do believe. I do believe if everybody talks and marches to our North Star, if we are speaking from the same sheet of music, if we are saying the concept of community collaboration is an expectation in every school throughout North, South, East, and West Fulton County, that constant message of everybody saying it can start to turn the dial as it relates to his question. My last point is this. I'm in my second year here in Fulton County, and I know enough to be dangerous. But, but, I have learned that Fulton County, we have everything we need. We have everything we need. 
we have the resources, we have the structure, we have the leadership, we have the inertia, we have the sense of urgency in our communities. We have everything we need to be collectively great. I don't know how many of boxer fans, I believe Fulton County, pound for pound, should be a national kind of global contender. I'm not interested in Fulton County being the best in Georgia. We're not educating students for Georgia, right? I believe Fulton County has it. It will not be overnight. We are already on the way. But I believe as a leader here, assessing the infrastructure and focus, amazing things can happen in Fulton County. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rose. Now we know a lot more about the five-year strategic plan, and I don't know about y'all, but that gets me really excited and really proud to be a part of it. I teach students every day, and sometimes there are tests. You didn't know there was going to be a test tonight, but there is. This is the part where you all groan. <laughs> and I have some students who are going to help me with your test. They are coming to the stage for you to meet them right now. From Riverwood High School, we have Aubrey Sharon and Lucy Howard. And from Creeks Creekside High School, we have Brandon Pierre and Brianna West. As they come, I'll give you a hint. Pick up your number one fan because you're going to need it for your test. Hi, everyone. We are here to unveil the new strategic plan for Fulton County Schools. Yes, a new five-year strategic plan. But what is a strategic plan and what is it for? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <sighs> All right, y'all. <clears throat> Let me take, okay. All right, I can do this. Okay. I'm glad you asked. I did my homework. <clears throat> Doing my research, I discovered that a strategic plan is the result of organization's process of by defining its strategy or directions and how decisions will be made to allocate resources to pursue this, to pursue this strategy. Now, in short, it is the strategies that the district will use for the next five years. So we need your help to help unveil this plan for the future, not just today, but through the years as we accomplish our goals. Yes, and we're gonna need all of your help. So everyone who's seated in the blue section over here, please stand up. I'm gonna ask you a question, and all you have to say in response is, we will. So when I go like this, you'll say, we, we will. will. Our first pillar of focus is student achievement. And naturally, since you all are a, um, a school system, you are very concerned with student achievement, and I, being a student, am also concerned. <laughs> so my question for you is, will you help commit your time and resources into preparing students with a strong academic foundation and providing them with the skills they need beyond graduation? Thank you. You may be seated. All right. Now, if you're in the gold section, let's stand up, okay? Now, the blue section did a wonderful job, but let's see if we can be a little bit better. So let's try this, okay? So when I say you, we will, you say we will, okay? We will? We will. All right. Now, this pillar focused on people and culture. This not only encompasses our employees, but our students, our family, and every human resource department here in our school system. Now, will you join me in constructing, providing, and creating a wonderful, welcoming, inviting culture to all who enters our walls? We will. I can't hear you. Say it one more time. We will. Thank you so much, Go Section. You may be seated. Hmm. Now, I just realized that a red tie with a business suit can be signal for important negotiations. All right. Now, if you're in the red section, it's time for you to stand up and be heard. All right. All right. Now, what's the two words we use again? We will. All right. Now, 
The third pillar is all about community collaboration. At my school, we have business partners who support our school by providing assistance with special projects and programs. Now, their participation helps us strengthen not only our school, but also our local community. Now, as students, we appreciate seeing business people support their time to enrich our educational experience. Now, I know some principals out here appreciate the support from our community partners. So, when you commit to being, finding, or working with an active partner to succeed student success? All right, thank you. You may be seated. Now on to the green section. If you're in the green section, get on your feet and let's get excited. What do you say? Very good. The last pillar is all about responsibility. Fiscal responsibility, that is. It takes resources in order to get the job done, and as, as well as effective allocation of funds and assets. Will you do your part to be responsible to hold us accountable for the resources entrusted to us? We will. May be seated. So earlier, I talked about the definition of a strategic plan. Yes, you did, but did you mention a goal? Hmm. I don't remember hearing a goal. Well, there is one. Hmm. I want everybody to stand up and Come recite on. the goal with me. If you forget it, it's right up here. Yes. <laughs> Are you ready? One, two, three. Our, Our goal, goal is, is to prepare all students to graduate, graduate ready to pursue and succeed on their chosen paths. paths. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Okay. All right. Didn't our Riverwood and Creekside students do an awesome job leading us in our commitment to Strategic Plan 2020? Now give yourselves a hand as well for participating. Now that we are all excited about our commitment to the plan, there's something else we can do to make sure we are going to be ready to spread the word about our strategic plan and its goals. Next, our next participant is here tonight with an original composition she wrote for the program this evening. Asia Moten is a senior at North Springs High School with plans to study communications and marketing at Savannah State College. She has an exciting song she and her fellow North Springs High School students produced for you. She's going to be assisted by our Riverwood and Creekside students. They're going to get you clapping along. Let's give Asia and the others a rousing round of applause as they get started. All right, how y'all doing tonight? All right, we finna loosen up tonight. Ain't none of this. Uh, we finna get, we finna turn up today, all right? Y'all ready? All right, I'm ready where you are, man. Hey, everybody get up. Feel free to stand up, clap your hands, you know. Shout out to my producers, Wynn Reynolds. He did this beat right here. I love this beat so much. <laughs> hey, yeah, look, ha. Clap your hands like this. Check. I like y'all energy, yeah. We care, we care, we care, hey. we care. Hey. Look, hey. look. Hey. Break it down for me. Hey, yeah, hey, come on. Hey, look, <laughs> look, huh. Well, Fulton County, County make it, you know you can't go wrong. We want to educate and make them brains grow up strong. Student achievement is important and we strive for it. We prepare students with strong foundations. Hey, people and culture, that's important too. We don't care who you are, what you going through. Community collaboration is part of the situation. Engage your families and civic organizations. Bet you're wondering if your taxes are being safe. Don't worry about it because you know we protect the money safe. Manage public funds and assets very efficient. Hold us to a word or you can give us a ticket because we rely on Hey, yeah. look, we rely on y'all. Look, yeah. hey, it's Fulton County. Fulton County School. Fulton County School. Hey. You know how we do. Hey, Fulton County School. Hey, Fulton County School. Look, hey, yeah. 
Or to county clubs Listen to this though You know how we Snow days ain't no worry Cause we gon' make them up Cause it's Georgia weather Just love to switch up The kids in good hands Follow our plan The keys to success You know that we can Said you know that we can Said you know that we can Hey, like that blue I like that blue <laughs> Know that we can For the county Hey, hey For the county school Yeah we rely on y'all. Look, Fulton. hey, Fulton, Fulton, County Fulton, County Fulton, hey, Fulton County Schools. Hey, Fulton County Schools. Fulton County Schools. You know how we do. Hey, Fulton County Schools. You know how we do. Hey, like that. Hey, Ooh. what? Hey, <laughs> hey, Fulton County Schools. We do this for you. Hey, thank you so much. Thank y'all so much. All right. Great job, Asia, and students. Thank you so much. Hasn't this been a great evening? We may be too excited to sleep tonight, but don't forget, it is a school night, so try to be calm on the ride home. We could not put on an event without our sponsors. Fatima Ladipo is the area manager of external affairs for AT&T and a major state of our school sponsor from the start. One of the pillars of the strategic plan is about community collaboration. Without the support of AT&T and Junior Achievement, this lovely event would not be possible. We appreciate the support of these awesome community partners. Let's thank her with our applause as she comes. Good evening. Again, my name is Fatima Latipo, and I'm Regional Director for External Affairs with AT&T. 2018 marks AT&T's 139th year here in Georgia. And on behalf of our 19,000 employees in the state, I want to thank you for the opportunity for allowing us to serve you all all these years. We are proud to be a part of this community and honored to be a sponsor of tonight's State of Our Schools. This evening represented a wonderful opportunity for us to celebrate the district's successes, but also to rethink possible and, pres and presenting um, a vision for how to prepare and equip our next generation of our leaders for success. Again, I look forward to working with Dr. Rose and continuing to be a strong partner with the Fulton County Schools as you all continue to bring forth new ideas to uh, add to student success. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Latipo. I hope you're having a wonderful time tonight learning more about the Strategic Plan 2022. We are so appreciative of your presence. Thank you to all of the program participants. We also want to thank our sponsors, AT&T, the Georgia World Congress Center, and Junior Achievement. Actually, would Jack Harris with Junior Achievement of Georgia please stand so we can recognize you? Can you make it? There he is. <laughs> Thank you so much and everyone who's a part of the JA organization. Next, we want to thank the architects of our strategic plan who give us such visionary leadership every day, our school board members and Dr. Rose. And finally, thanks to all of you for your commitment to our education in our community and our students. I hope you all have a wonderful evening.